All right, good to go. The chair notes the time is 6.03. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with the roll call of the ZBA members. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Henry? Here. Mr. Slobiter? Here. Ms. Marshall? Here. A quorum is present. Also attending the public hearing tonight is Mr. Rob Wachilla, planner for the town. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 48, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff, and they may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing star nine on their phone. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where the information about the project and public and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits and the board is not ruled by precedent. Tonight's agenda, um, consideration of the meeting minutes from November, from December 28th, 2023, a public hearing on ZBA FY 2023-18, ASD Shootsbury MA Solar LLC, request for a special permit under section 3.340 of the zoning bylaw to construct a 9.35 megawatt DC 4.4 megawatt AC grounded mounted solar vo solar photovoltaic part uh, array spanning 41 acres on a 102 acre site with the accompanying battery energy storage system and three parcels of land owned by WD Cowles Inc. identified as map 9B parcels 11 and 12 and map 9D parcel 27 on Shootsbury Road RO outlying residence zoning district Frontage and access to the subject parcels of land is located between 187 and 201 Shootsbury Road. This is continued from, from October 12, 2023. A public meeting on ZBA FY 2023-04, 266 East Hadley Road to satisfy condition 55, in which the new owner meets with the ZBA to review the existing management plan. And ZBA FY 2018-10, 40 University Drive, to satisfy conditions 19 and 21 to review an updated management plan with the new business owner. Uh, there's general public comment period following that on any matter not before the board tonight and other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours. Uh, the first question is, are there any dis disclosures from members of the board? If not, let's move to the meeting minutes from um, uh, Thursday, December 28th, I reviewed them. I think they're well done and they seem to um, comport with my recollection of the meeting. Does anybody have any changes or modifications to the meetings, meeting minutes? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes for December 28th, 2023. So, so move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? If there's... Given given that I was absent from that meeting, I'm going to abstain voting. 
Well, I wasn't there either, but I figure you need three votes. We so need three. If, if the two people who <laughs> yeah. were yeah. If, if I mean, the we, two people who were there. Since we're in discussion, it seems to me that we really can't require, we shouldn't require that people who are at the meeting approve the minutes because we would never get, you know, it's just going to be too difficult to get the minutes done. And, and we even have a chance of members getting off the ZBA and we'd never be able to approve the minutes. So um, I don't think you have to be there, but I, you don't have to either vote for it either, Mr. Henry, but <laughs> other people have said the same thing in the past as well. Okay. So, um, <laughs> So um, if there are no further discussion, um, the vote occurs on the minutes. I vote aye. Uh, Mr. Henry? I vote aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. All right, we got that done. Good, thank you. Um, the next order of business is a public Mr. hearing. Uh, yes. Mr. Chair, I'll interrupt you, but I hate to be that guy. Uh, was the motion um moved and seconded by members of the board so i think we might yeah. skip that step yeah okay yeah. So make sure. and marshall did. Yeah. okay thank you Sloviter may moved and marshall seconded okay i'm just writing that down thank you oh, it's good that's why we have good meetings um, good minutes in our meetings because you do that that's why you are that guy <laughs> the next order of business is a public hearing on zba fy 2023-18 Shootsbury, Massachusetts Solar LLC. Um, is there who's uh, who's representing the applicant tonight? So we have um, Mr. Tom Reedy and then Corey from Pure Sky. But Mr. Chair, I just want to remind you that since we right. only have three members from that panel, we have to continue. Um, but I just have... want to make sure that they know that. Okay. Do you They're want me to? Do you want yeah. me to uh, allow for them to, to speak yeah. on that behalf? Okay. Bring them in just so that they yep. acknowledge that that's what we're doing. Yep. I'll promote them right now. I'll also promote uh, Mr. Reedy. Yep. Hey, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Reedy. Yep. See you. I'm I'm good. Acknowledged. We know, we, we know exactly what's going on. All right, so Mr. Reedy, just give us your name for the All right. record. Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of ASD Shoots Bree MA Solar LLC. Got it. And Corey, I don't know your last name, so help me out with that and just tell just for the record. Yeah, good evening, uh, board. Uh, uh, Corey McCandless, Pure Sky Energy um, here on uh, representing on behalf of the project as well. We do understand um, the situation for tonight's meeting um, and we look forward to continue working with everybody um, for the next meeting or for, you know, when we can. When, when we, we get can... back to it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. you got it. Um, so I would entertain a motion that we uh, continue this hearing until February 8th at six o'clock. I think that's the right date, is it not, Rob? It is, and I just want to double check that that date works with Everald and David. Does that date work for the both of you? I'm sorry. That is I'm February eighth. Yep. Are we that's... just? Um, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit confused. Are we just bypassing on, tonight? No. Aren't so okay. Just want to make sure everyone's so Tom. That's good. Yes. Okay. Uh, All right. So we said if, if I live that long, February eighth works for me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, is there an, is there an alternate date? I don't think February eighth works for me. So we could do um, oh. let's see what we got. So Feb so February eighth is a normally scheduled date, but we could also do the twenty second, which is the next scheduled meeting date after that, or if you want to do an off week. Let's do, um, let's do it on a regular scheduled day if yep. we can. Yep. So the twenty second would be the next best option uh, to do, choose. I can do the twenty. I can do the twenty second. David, does that does that I, work for you, David? Okay. As of now, yes, I can do the twenty second also. Okay. And let me just check my calendar as well. Yep. And I know it works for Craig. Um, his schedule oh. is pretty open in February. Yep, that works for me. Alrighty. 
I'll write that okay. down. Okay, so the, I'd entertain a motion to continue this hearing until February 22nd at 6 p.m. Wow. Okay. I'm so moved, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Just no that discussion? I'm not voting. I'm not voting on this. Right? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Marshall, you're not voting on this one. So, um, roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. The vote is three to nothing. The motion passes. And we'll see you guys on uh, February 22nd. Thank you very much. All right. The next order, order of business is a public hearing on the, uh, um, excuse me, a public meeting on uh, ZBA FY 2023-04 East Hadley Road to satisfy conditions 55, condition 55 in which the new owner meets with the ZBA to review the existing management plan. Um, Mr. Reedy, are you representing the applicant? I am, I've got uh, everything on the agenda tonight. Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll, uh, we'll acknowledge that you've already introduced yourself um, and you can make make your presentation. I have a couple of questions and uh, then sure. go ahead. Yeah, I mean, so this this is simple as the next one is going to be simple as well. Uh, Consolidated Amherst Holdings acquired the property in August of 2023, end of August of 2023. Um, They've reviewed the management plan. We've talked about it. I mean, this this process with them started last year. Uh, I forget exactly when we had submitted. We had, I've been in touch with uh, Mr. Wachilla at the end of last year, um, kind of going back and forth of getting to this meeting. I've talked to the new owners. They've reviewed the management plan, and they're just keeping things status quo. So they're they've reviewed it. They're accepting it um, with all that it has, and then once they really get their feet under them and have an opportunity to see how this particular um, development runs, then they can always determine at that point, are they gonna make any changes? And if so, we would come back before you for any modifications. But at this point, you know, the way I read the condition is, you know, make sure that it's confirmed that they've reviewed it, which they have, and then secondarily see if they want any changes. And then it's up to you to determine if those changes kind of rise to the level of going to a public hearing. And right now, they're just saying what it is is we're we're gonna keep the status quo. So um, I had a couple of quick questions. First, the management plan that we were looking at was dated October of October twenty eighth, and I'm wondering if that's the is that the most the the final management plan because I know that we had we. We went until December, and there were some changes after. There were some other discussions after that. I don't know, Miss Marshall, you were on the panel for this, if I remember correctly. Yes. And yeah, the, I'm just wondering if it's this is the final final management plan. I noticed it's, it was approved in December fifteenth. Uh, yeah, so, I think it was dated October, but yeah. Rob, you're probably going to say exactly what I'm going to say that these are the approved versions that Rob had sent to me. And then I had sent along to the new owner and this is what they had reviewed. I mean, if, if you want us to update the owner section and like little things like that, we're happy to. Right, so the owner isn't VA Amherst LLC? Correct. No, it's Consolidated um, Consolidated Amherst Holdings LLC. So- Okay, so that, and it's not, and their address and all that is different? Yeah, yeah, precisely. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a new owner. So we're happy new. to update that. The, the purpose is okay. like the crux of that management plan we're following it. All right. So update owner, that'd be one thing. Sure. Um, I also noted on this, if you, I don't know if you were representing them at the time, but there are a couple of um, contentious issues that I just want to make sure the new owners recognize they were in the conditions and they aren't in the management plan. So one of which is regarding the security services, the management, pl the management plan we have before us talks about uh, weekend having weekend um, security personnel on site, the conditions specify the hours for that. And that should probably be in the management plan. Sure. Uh, yeah. We, so that, we that can update that. And yeah, Mr. Chair, I had, I did represent, I mean, I, I had come in with Redwood when they were going through the process and kind of brought them across the finish line and remember yeah. very well all those conversations. So that was something 
you know, that I had talked to the new owners about was the, like looking at the permit too, because it's not just the management plan that that is what it is, but it's really the permit that governs how they have to run this right. including the management plan. But if, yeah, if you want us to update the management plan to include the language from the condition, that's easy. We, we're happy. To yeah, do. That's easy to do. Let's just make sure that it's there okay. because it's, it's just a, it's, there's ambiguity and I want to make sure it's, it's there. And the other thing was, this is, I know this is, um, maybe trite, but it's bike racks. There was a lot of talk about bike racks and this says they're going to be built on building 97 and 105. And that if you look at LC 200, you can see where those bike racks are supposed to be. I looked at, at what the LC 200 that I could find on the website and there are no bike racks on any place. So, I think what I what I would like to do, what I would suggest, Mr. Reedy, is that we ask Rob to go back and review that. I think that was all done in the last meeting, the bike racks, because uh, there was a couple of, it was a, a source of discussion. Yeah. And I'd like you to review that and see where we came down and make sure that that's reflected in the plan. Ms. Marshall? Yeah, the bike racks were definitely on the site plan because yeah. they, they took the covered you know, square footage a tiny bit over and, and we needed to waive. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And so I think that this, I, I'm thinking that the site plans referenced in the management plan are not the final site plans. So what I'd like to make sure is that we coordinate that. Yeah. No All right. So that makes sense. And then you do, I was looking at other things and I see that you do mention who's doing the snow removal and the, and the, um, the trash removal as well. Yeah. Um, that's all on the management plan. I'm just going through my notes real quickly. I just want to make sure we get this all so you don't have to come back for these kind of minor things. So Mr. Chair, did you um, want me to coordinate with Mr. Reedy after this meeting or like sometime during the day next week or something to, to I guess coordinate the exact site plan that's going to go in the management plan and be attached to it. Okay. I just want to double check on that. So, so I think the motion would be, I mean, well, if there are other questions, I have an idea of what I think the motion should be, but we should have some discussion. Okay. Ms. Marshall. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe I'm confusing this with a different project or, Maybe I'm not, but it's specified elsewhere, maybe in the permit, that did we not ask for or agree to cameras outside doors? That, yeah. Yeah. We did. And it's in the conditions, but oh, okay. we, can that, we can put that in the management plan too. But I, I don't know. Do I have to repeat everything? No. I don't know what's appropriate. I just wanted to be sure. We did say the new owner time. knows about that, <laughs> but Tom. If I recall that. correctly, we said yeah. manage there should be cameras on every door used by tenants, but not used for maintenance. I right. think that was what we were yeah. pointing to, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, what I are there other questions or from the board? So I would then, I think the motion that we, um, well, hold on. There's one of the things that there's, isn't there a conflict between 55 and 58, Rob? I'm sorry, I just discovered this before the, the meeting. Condition 55 says we're supposed to review, hold on, I'm just going to pull it up. And I don't mean to surprise you with this, but I, like I say, I just came up with it and looked at it before the meeting. Condition 55 has, um, says if the property business are sold, the applicant comes back to, and, and read to us to review and determine if it's still applicable and decide whether or not to hold a public hearing to review the management plan. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then 58 says new property owner shall return to the ZBA at a public meeting for review and approval of the, for review and approval of the updated management plan. So we have two things that really are operable at this point, two conditions. And I so, think we can satisfy 55 by, mm -hmm. by um, approving it via um, pursuant to 58. So it sounds like, um, and this is my interpretation, Mr. Chair, you could, you know, take it or leave it, but 
seems like 55 is the condition we're satisfying tonight, but 58 suggests that they have to make these edits and then come back at the next meeting to have it reviewed for a final approval by the board to the management plan. But you know what's going to happen is if they're going to take a look at this plan and they're going to come by, back with a another management plan at some point that we either have to approve mm -hmm. or that we have to approve, they have to come back with another management plan. In a public meeting. In a public meeting. And we have to approve it. Mm -hmm. So if I could, maybe you look at 59 as well, and it's probably, you know, you got approved management plan shall be followed. Any changes to the management plan shall return to the ZBA at a public meeting. So again, you got to come talking back. about updates. And it, well, I think my suggestion would be um, if you can approve this evening, any updated management plan in accordance with what you have said with the okay. inclusion of, you know, update the owner, inclusion of security guard, and then making sure that the bike racks is accurate. That can be your motion and approval this evening. And then subsequently, if the owner says, well, geez, we then want to change these other things. We come back separately there. They don't have any intention to do that. Right. We're just here to say, we got to get our feet under us with this. Let's make sure it works. And then we can figure out if there's ways to, to tweak it. No, I think that, I think that we can do that. I think that approval of this management plan under 50, we satisfy 55 and 58 if we approve this management plan. And then if you subsequently make further changes, if you, your client looks at this and says, we really want to change X, Y, and Z, you got to come back. I just want to make sure that we acknowledge that we have 55, 58, and 59 as conditions regarding coming back to the board if you have subsequent changes. So. It seems to me that the motion we should make tonight is to approve the management plan uh, contingent on the um, updates that we've spoken about security bike racks. What was the third thing? Security bike racks and then cameras. Security bike racks and cameras. Yes. Um, and the owner. Uh, Rob. Yeah, and, the yes. and the owner. And the owner. So four things. Yep. Those four things get that to and that um, that is presented to the building commissioner to Rob and to the to Rob and Rob, and would be considered um, approved when that action takes place. Does that make sense? All right. Um, does somebody want to make that motion? <laughs> Good luck <laughs> trying to make that motion, Miss Marshall. I move, I move that we approve the management plan before us as long as it is, it is updated to reflect the new owner, uh, the security guards, cameras, and uh, the bike racks. Right. And um, also, um, it was the uh, security guard hours. Oh, I'm sorry. That Yeah, yeah it does hours. mention the guards. So the hours of the security guard, as yep. well as the, the cameras, okay. the bike racks. And the owners, new owners. And we get and we get good. And uh, just to add to that, we get the ac accurate site plan that we're working off the right site plan. I Great. hope that's in the permit. But if it isn't, right? Well, it should be in the permit. But yeah. <laughs> the reference here is, is wrong. So okay. Yep. All right. Is there a second to that? Second. All right. It's moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion. The chair votes aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. All right. Okay, Thank Mr. Reedy, that's good. Just get that into Rob and Rob, Certainly. our dynamic duo, and uh, we can you can go forward. And then when you have other changes, when you, they have other changes, um, we'll see you then. We'll be back. Sure. Thank you. All right. The, the next order of business is ZBA FY 2018-10 40 University Drive to satisfy conditions 19 and 21 to review an updated management plan with the new business owner. Mr. Reedy, do you want to give us just the background here real quickly? Sure. Um, so this is 40 University Drive, formerly known as Savannah's. Um, there is a new operator uh, taking over the space, changing it from Savannah's to what's going to be called Amherst Public House. 
uh, upscale pub food, craft beers, wood fired pizza. I mean, they've got a fantastic pizza oven inside. Um, we were in front of the uh, local license commission on December 28th and received unanimous approval for transfer of the liquor license from Savannah's to Amherst uh, Public House. Um, the owners, Paul Tupa and Peter Lucido, they're uh, professionals, professional restaurateurs. They own, I think, four restaurants out in Plymouth. Um, both UMass grads, really great guys, very professional. Uh, they are taking on both this Amherst Public House and then Amherst Burger Company closed, which is you know, nothing to do with ZBA, but they're also taking over that space and doing an uptown uh, tap and grill. And so... You know, I think they're very bright to have a couple of spots in town to be able to support the each uh, restaurant. And so this one, Amherst Public House, um, there were minimal changes to the to the management plan. It was really just like the additional management um, information right. from Savannah's style of that kind of fine dining to the upscale pub food is what they're going to be uh, proposing there. And the hours of operation, Savannah's was really only open like 4.30 to maybe 8.30 a few days a week. And so they're they're looking to open for um, much longer hours. I mean, they're looking at, um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday, 10 a.m. to midnight. Now, I don't know that they're going to be open that whole time, but just to have that ability for like Sunday brunches uh, or opening a little earlier on a Sunday and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, again, 10 a.m. but to 1 a.m. So they've got more flexibility in the hours. And I think it's just going to be a different concept. They've updated the interior of the space cosmetic only with some like barn boards uh, and some different colors, uh, adding a couple of TVs. So I think you're just going to have a different feel, a cozy feel when you go in there. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's what's there before you. Uh, Paul's on, if you want to talk to him, uh, you can make him a panelist. But like I said, uh, great guys, connected to the university, professional restaurateurs. I think the town will be very, I mean, we're lucky to have them. I think the town will be very pleased to, to have them in these spaces. You can make them a panelist. Yeah, I could do that. I just wanted to get your confirmation on Good. that. Hey, Paul, you're live. But muted. But muted. There you go. All right. Try okay. To so I had one, just uh, Mr. Tupa, just give us your name and address for the record. Um, my name is Paul Tupa. Um, I live in Pembroke, Massachusetts. Um, but um, I have one get question. Out to and, uh, get a couple of rest. Oh, sure. I have one quick question. The existing special permit has hours sure. until midnight on the weekends, and I know you want to go to one o'clock. Um, so, uh, number 14 says, uh, condition 14 says hours until midnight. Do we need to amend at a later date? Do we need to amend the special permit? Do we do that now? We, we're just in a public meeting. We're not in a public hearing. Um, you know, we have, we have a, conflict there of your, of your desire and what's in your management plan and what's in the in the uh the special permit and i don't want you to get caught on that down the road you know somebody saying you have to close up at midnight when you got a full house at 12 30. so Mr. chair um, if i could um yeah. speak to that one for you so i did talk yeah. about this internally with with the building commissioner um and we he suggested to me that since the hours of operation can be addressed in the management plan Yep. That if you put that in the management plan that's being updated and submitted to the board tonight, um, that technically would suffice in terms of code inspection and code enforcement. The only thing is we just have to attach these meeting minutes that discuss mm -hmm. the change of the hours of operation to the actual permit file for this special permit. That way it can be referenced when a code official has to do an inspection on the property for whatever reason. Um so that was suggested to me um, without having to have the applicant modify the special permit just to change the hours of operation by one hour. 
yeah. it seems to make sense with me and that provides protection for the applicant and saves us having to have another meeting and yeah. putting everybody through this so um may i ask one question yep. yes mr henry are, are there any um time restrictions with the liquor license no we have the we actually got the approval before this was submitted so we had the time approved by uh the license commission first before we came before you okay all right any other questions mr sloviter um, I have two questions. Uh, are you making any exterior modifications to the building other than changing the sign? Obviously, you're not going to still call yourself Savannah. Uh, no, Paul, I'll answer that. Uh, no, no exterior changes um, except to the signs. And I've already talked with Rob and Rob about the changes to the sign. And they said just handle that through inspection services. Okay. And my other question. I don't remember the part, but I read through everything this afternoon. And in some somewhere in either your application or or something, you mention um, record back music that will be background music and live music. Is that a change? What did Savannah's? I was only in Savannah's once. Did Savannah's have live music? I don't think so. They had the ability. So this is. It, it's the same uh, live or pre-recorded entertainment. It's actually accessory use under the, the zoning bylaw. Oh, and we okay. had asked for it when Savannah's was approved and it's the same here. So while they so, might not have had it, they had the ability to have it. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're not, that's not a change. Correct. You're, you, Savannah's had the ability to have music, chose not to. You will have the ability to have music and may or may not choose to have it, but you're, that is not a change to the operation. And you're bound by the regulation of 70 decibels. At the I think it's line. 70 at the property line. So that's also not a change. Correct. Good. Thank you. Mr. Wachilla. Just want to add a clarifying point to Mr. Silver's comment too. Um, so usually for other uses, um, if they if the board wanted to be more restrictive on their ability to go to live music right away, they could instill a condition that requires them to come back and speak with the board. But in this case, that didn't really seem to be an issue. So they do have that ability that unrestricted because the use, which is considered an accessory use to the main one, which was the restaurant, was allowed anyways. It, it's it's fine. I, I raised the question only for clarification. Mm -hmm. And I'm only interested in 70 decibels at the property line. I don't actually care what they, how they exercise their live music option. So I'm, I, that was the only reason I raised it. It seemed like it could possibly be a change. I'm glad it's not. So it's fine. Good question. All right. Any other questions? All right, so I would um, entertain a motion that we approve the um, management plan with the changes to the hours uh, on weekends until one o'clock, uh, that that be attached to the file. Um, yes, Ms. Marshall. I believe they are also starting earlier. I heard 1030. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. change hours. So we'll just say change in hours as reflected on their man on their updated management plan, and Perfect. that we we don't accidentally mess them up, um, and, and that that be attached to the uh, file. Did I just hear him so moved by Mr. Henry? I, I'd like to ask one more question. If that's yes, okay. you bet. So with with longer hours, I see that there's only twenty eight parking stalls. Um, does that mean parking spaces with longer hours? Is there what is the plan for? potentially more patrons and parking. So I think this, there's 31 parking spaces altogether. I think 28 of them are um, non-ADA, three of them are ADA. Um, there is a condition of the approval that would allow, there's a parking agreement between 2535 University Drive, which is across the street, and this property in case there is overflow parking. What I'll say practically is uh, if you look at the parking right next door, uh, you know, where the 
um, the hangar is and that, I mean, a lot of those uses are really nine to five Greenfield Savings Bank, Cayman's Real Estate, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's going to be parking available if necessary, either across the street or I would say even next door. Okay. So there's no concern that people will park at University Drive? No, no. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's limited by capacity anyway, once right. you build the restaurant. Correct. Okay. Mr. Sloviter. Staying with parking, does the restaurant have a right to use the parking lot where the eye, the optician is located and the hangar? Is that... Do, do they need an agreement or can they just use it? Is that already a done deal? Yeah, so that um, uh, there is no formal agreement. Technically, to get in the weeds a little bit, under zoning, I think that we could not count those parking spaces for this use just because those parking spaces, Mr. Eye Doctor, Hangar, are needed for that use uh, as a practical matter. I mean, just even with Savannah's, people would park at the hangar, go inside, come over to Savannah's, go back to the hangar after. And so I think it's just more of a, we, we know the landowners, uh, Gleason Jondro, they're terrific. They actually, um, you know, if they do the snow plowing, if they need anything, if we need anything, they're right there. So okay. if there's an issue, we can talk to them, but I don't see it getting to that point. We just don't, there's nothing formal. We okay. could get there if we had to. Right. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, rows and rows of parking spaces in that parking lot. You go all the way down to the Greenfield Bank. There's, if you had that, if you were that successful, <laughs> had that much business, that would be a really good thing for the town. I would be really happy about that. I don't think I've ever seen that parking lot get packed before. No, no. I'm with I never have. Yeah. yeah. But if you need, you know, if it doesn't work out, you need to get an agreement, that's what you have to do. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, any other questions? Those are good parking questions. If not, um, I'd entertain a motion that we approve the management plan uh, with the changes to the hours as uh, referred to. And I think it's your extra, what's the title of your document, additional information. Yes. Um, and have that attached to the file, the special permit um, to permit, um, to to avoid any uh, confusion as to the uh, permitted hours for the operation of the, of the restaurant. So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. second. We got two seconds. It's great. Um, I defer. <laughs> all right, we're back to one. All right. <laughs> the uh, vote occurs on the motion. The chair votes aye. Mr. Henry. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. The vote is unanimous, um, four to nothing, so moved. And congratulations, Mr. Tupa, I really hope you're successful. Um, that was, we could use a restaurant in that position down there on that location. It would be great, it would be good for the town. Thank you. Thank you, very excited. Thank you, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, the next order of business is uh, public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. Mr. Reedy, thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you. <laughs> Happy New Year. Bye bye. Bye, Tom. Do we have any attendees who wish to speak? Any panelists? If you do, raise your hand, use the raised hand function on your screen to in so indicate. I see no uh, raised hands. I see no indication for public comment. Nope. The matter is not before the board tonight. The next order of business is new business. Um, Rob, you could talk about the ske upcoming schedule, what we have, that'd be helpful for board members and then anything that anybody wants to raise. Sure. Um, so I do have a note that I have to ask you about one of the upcoming meetings. So let me just go through my lists real quick. All righty. So da -da -da -da. next Wednesday, January 17th, is actually the continued hearing date for the proposed uh, nightclub slash restaurant at 23 to 25 North Pleasant Street known as Gabe's Underground. Um, that is their second public hearing. Um, they are going to be providing a bunch of updates to their management plan and um, finalize that discussion for that public hearing. Um, Mr. Meadows is a part of that, and he'll be back for it. But Mr. Judge, you originally went to the site visit, anticipating that you'd be on the panel, but 
we understand that you had other matters come up. So that will be a four member panel. Um, then the week after that, January 25th, we do have a public hearing scheduled, but this one is for a town of Amherst project. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the Fort river elementary school project. That's been talked about for the past couple of years. Uh, the zoning board does have to approve construction within a zoning district known as the flood prone conservancy district. And part of the school building is going to be touching that zoning district. So the way it works is in order to build the school, they have to get site plan review approval from the planning board because a part of this building, some outdoor structures and a giant pavilion they're trying to construct are within the FPC zoning district, which kind of cuts the property in half. Um, the zoning board has to approve it through a special permit. So they have to get approval from both boards. So I guess the question I have for those in attendance tonight, if any of you would be interested in serving on that panel on January 25th, we don't anticipate it going beyond just the one hearing because it's a town project. And if anything, the zoning board's not approving the use itself. You're just approving their ability to construct those buildings in the uh, flood prone conservancy district. So I don't know if any of you are available that date, but that is a normally scheduled ZBA meeting. It'd be two Thursdays from now. That's that's the week I'm not available. Um, I'm out of the country. Okay. No worries. I'm a, and I'll still be out of the country. So two other countries. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, and I know you. I think, maybe... I'll, I think I'll be conflicted. Don't you? Yeah, you're, you got a con maybe you got a conflict there. So, Sarah, let me ask. I, um, I, said, I wrote to the town clerk, but I haven't mm -hmm. heard back. I don't know if she's on vacation or. So, I can follow up with her next week and ask because it seems like, you know, with Everald and Steve being absent, we might have to find three other members. Um, Mr. Slover, are you available that date? No, I am. I am not available. <laughs> okay. It is. It is Robert Burns' birthday, and I will be leading a Burns dinner <laughs> and reciting "Ode to a Haggis" from memory, <laughs> wearing a happy. kilt. Wearing a kilt. I hope you're drinking some scotch. Uh, and that. As so, long as you don't have to eat the haggis. No, that's <laughs> true. I'm not. So, I figure my my ancestors left Scotland specifically to because of haggis. Get away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So three so, of you won't be able to make it. So Sarah, so Rob, sorry. Go ahead. Are we bound by that date? Given so many absence, can that not be more? Yeah. So um, I can see if we can scrap together um, four members. If we can't, we could just see if we can vote to continue it with three members if possible. Uh, otherwise, they're going to have to withdraw and resubmit, um, which is fine. It's a town project. They don't have to pay like an application fee, but you know, that's the realistic situation. I mean, what I could do is I could check to see if Sarah can serve on that panel if it's not a conflict of interest. Um, we have three other people I could ask, and if they all say yes, then we have a full panel, not a big deal. Um, again, this is like a project that's just going to be a one and done you're not really talking about much besides what's allowed in that district. Um, and it's only like a quarter of the building. But it's not urgent. It doesn't it's have not, to be right. No, right. it, it doesn't. It done. doesn't. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So, but it would be nice. To, it would be nice to get out of the way. So, yeah. Get out of the way. And it goes well, to the planning. Get, Sorry, go ahead. Get other people, Rob. Yeah. Go for it. If not, we'll just schedule it into later in February or March. Okay. Um, okay. And then in terms of the rest of the meeting schedules, I'll go through really quick. Uh, I know I spent a lot of time on that one. Can I, so hold on. Does oh, that yep. mean there won't be probably, or there might not be any meeting on the 25th if so many members are away? Or there is there another matter that I could definitely participate in? So, um, you know, if you're clear to serve on that panel, you could be on it. Mm -hmm. We also have Hilda, Phil, Philip, and then Craig. So yeah, but is there all... any other business possible? Any other? No. Okay. Just that one. So okay. if if this we can't get a full panel together, it's just gonna have to be a canceled meeting. Um, and we can find a different date to do it. Uh, not a big deal. It might delay it because they go to the planning board on uh, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's just you know that's just the reality of it. We're all busy. It is what it is. Uh. So just going real quick for February. So February 8th, we have a public hearing scheduled for a variance. 
Uh, it is for a apartment mixed use building near Atkins Farm for Hampshire College. Um, and then we have February 22nd is the public hearing for the solar that we just moved. And then February 15th is our next hearing dates for the Valley CDC 40B project. So that's all I had, Mr. Chair, for updates. Um, thank you all for, for you know, politely declining that January 25th panel, but, you know, I'll figure it out. I always do. <laughs> all right. Any other matters which members want to raise? Okay. If not, I'd entertain a motion that we adjourn. So moved. And seconded by Mr. Sloviter. So seconded. Uh, the motion is not debatable. The chair votes aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. It's unanimous. We're done. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Have a good day.